Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today on the channel we are going to go forward with our Bible study in the book of Ezekiel. And we are on chapter 3 for this Bible study video. And before I go into reading and going over the actual Bible study chapter that we're in, I am led to a uh, verse in Psalm 19, Psalm 119 that is. Psalm 119, verse 103. And now this also goes in correlation with our reading today. As you will see, Ezekiel uh, is having a conversation with the Heavenly Father, and he's revealing to him what and who he is called to be in a position that he's getting ready to send him forward with uh, as he goes to the children of Israel. So 100 and Psalm 119, verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yes, they are sweeter than honey to my mouth. And that is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. His holy Bible. Hallelujah for it. So now let's go ahead and go into Ezekiel chapter 3. And see where it says, uh, Moreover, he said unto me, this is Ezekiel speaking. He said unto me, and this is what God said unto Ezekiel. Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this roll, okay, and go speak unto the house of Israel, okay? Now, again, if you've been following along with this in uh, chapter 2, the end of chapter 2, God began to speak to Ezekiel in reference to re reading the word of God, okay? And then again, it's nourishment. It is the substance that is the greatest substance on the face of this earth that fills you up from within and lets your cup runneth over, hallelujah, with the blessings of the Lord. So he told him here in chapter 2, starting with verse 9, he said, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and, and a roll of a book was there. Okay, and he spread it before me, and it was written therein, and within and out. And there was written uh, lamentations and mournings and woe. Okay, so we see that, you know, Ezekiel is being given the word of God. And he says, uh, going back in to chapter 3 of Ezekiel, he says that now, uh, so I opened my mouth and he, and, and he caused me to eat that roll. Now, of course, we, again, we're talking about the word of God and it's being referred to as a roll, something that you eat because it is nourishment from within. Okay. Or does it nourish our flesh? It, it nourishes our spirit. It feeds that real spiritual man that we are in the Holy Spirit that God has made us as he converted us into his kingdom. So we are feeding ourselves. And that was one of the first things that I was told when I was a babe in Christ uh, was to eat the word of God. Just read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. And the Lord will bring it alive inside of you. And that is also, I extend that same message out to others to do the same because it fills up. It replenishes you in this because you're of spirit. You're part of the word. Once you've been converted into the kingdom, the Holy Spirit. The words of the Bible are spirit-filled words spoken from the heavens, ignited by the heavens, okay? So it is feeding and filling you up from within. Your spirit, man, is being fed. And so he says, he took it and ate it, and it was as honey and sweetness. And he said unto me, son of man, go, get into the house of Israel. Go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them, Okay. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel, and not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but whose words thou canst not understand. For surely had I sent you to them, they would have hearkened unto me. Okay, these people, he's saying, because he sent them to the children of Israel, the house of Israel, they know me, they know my word, they've heard my word before, but they still don't hearken unto me my word, but they know who it is that's coming before them with this word, okay? Whenever they hear that word, doesn't matter who's presenting that word, because the word, if it's coming forth through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, then it is coming uh, from heaven, okay? And he says, but the house of Israel, they will not hearken unto you, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are, are impudent, and they're hard-hearted, okay? At that moment in time, that was the condition of their heart. Behold, I've made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than a flint have I made your forehead, okay? Fear them not, 
neither be dis dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house, okay? And see how God says to fear them not, because they are up there rebellious. They, they have no fear for God, so they don't have any fear for man. If you don't have any fear for God, you're not going to have fear for any type of uh, reverence to his presence, okay? Because, again, Ezekiel is representing God's presence in the earth, okay? Of course, he's not, you know, the individual would not have any respect for uh, the world because that's what the world is of, disrespect. Okay, so therefore, if that individual is walking in disrespect and having no respect for God and his kingdom, then uh, definitely they're not going to have respect for anyone, basically. And so he says here that uh, verse 8, he says, uh, no, verse 9. Nope, that's the one where he's made them harder. Than, okay, and as an animate harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So, uh, and he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto you, receive them in thy heart, and hear with thine ears. And, you know, because when the Holy Spirit gets ready to start speaking through an individual, that individual also, as God is telling Ezekiel, hear with thine ears what I, he says all my all thy words that i shall speak unto you receive in your heart okay because it's also a message to the individual that's receiving the word also okay at every moment given in time okay god is speaking through the power of his holy spirit he's speaking to all in the kingdom if you come before that person or if you happen to hear that message it is a it's a message of teaching of the word of god then he is speaking to you in the, if it's, that individual is in the will of God, okay, let me make that specific, because uh, outside of the will of God, you might hear something else, but you can still be hearing the word of God, but it might not relate to you, but within the will of God, you're going to hear God speak to you specifically from his kingdom, from heaven, and so verse 11 says, and go, get thee to, to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will not hear, okay, Okay, now Ezekiel, God is getting Ezekiel ready to go over uh, uh, into the midst of Israel where they're at in Babylon because they're in captivity uh, over there under King Nebuchadnezzar. So he says, then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. For I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and a noise of a great rushing. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness and the heat of the spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Okay, so here he's getting ready uh, or in another vision where the Heavenly Father is speaking to him and going to present uh, different messages to him. And so verse 15 says, Then I came to them of the captivity of Tel Abib. Then I dwelt by the river of Kabir, Kabar, Chabar, however they're pronouncing this. I'm saying different names each time, but it's because it's spelled, and it could be either way, the river of Chabar, Kabar. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. But nevertheless, the thing that we want to pay close attention to is the fact that he's sitting next to a river again, okay? Because water, we know that God is living water. Hallelujah. The fountain of living fresh water. Hallelujah. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me. And this is what it, the word was that said to me, Son of man, I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Okay. Now, that was the reason for us uh, actually reading that first verse from the psalm that we read. Psalm 119 verse 103. You know, so we can uh, grasp the understanding and the concept of how wonderful, sweet, and powerful God's word is. Now, whether that is him coming to us with warning or however he's coming to us, speaking. Speak, Lord. Speak to me. You know, I, I just want to hear from you. Speak it, even seeing him speak to other people. I love it. I've seen him doing it. I love it. I love it. I love it to see heaven move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. When God begins to move mightily with his presence in the earth and he begins to speak to his people, he begins to do things. Hallelujah. Thank you, heaven. 
So then going on, he says, so when I say unto the wicked, after God tells him what position he's getting ready to take him forward in, okay, which is, he says, the watchman. So he says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou gives him not warning, nor speaks to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand, because he told him to go forward and warn him, okay, to warn that specific particular person. And yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou but thou hast delivered your own soul because you went forward and you told him what thus says the Lord. But he, that individual ignored what thus says the Lord. And as we saw the children of Israel, when they did ignore what thus says the Lord, and uh, then those things took place uh, when they were in Jerusalem as a repercussion of that. So then verse 20 says, and again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Okay, now see, it's all in him understanding the position that God has placed him in and what he is to do, and how responsible he is for warning people uh, that the God's judgment is coming forward. Now, once the uh, warning has gone forward, it's up to the people or the individuals to do with, you know, to heed from that. And again, as we take a look at the position of the prophetic ministry from the Old Testament point of view, and we see how God used that particular office in the earth in the Old Testament and related to the spiritual of the new covenant in today's, okay, walking in the new covenant or walking in the kingdom of God today in the earth, how God may use that individual they may not have an ongoing conversation as ezekiel and god is having and what we're reading right now god may just use the person and place them over into the atmosphere okay and then begin to do the things that he's going to do through them automatically okay without actually having the conversation because they've given them hearts to god once you've given your heart to god and god has taken you and chosen you to be a part of his kingdom converted you into his kingdom it is by his free will that he uses you according to how he wants to use you for the heavens, okay? When you're in his will, that's the key to it, right? All of it, okay? When you're walking in his will. Because, again, Jesus Christ told us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? His will, God's will, not our will, but God's will. So then verse 21, he says, uh, nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he's warned. And also thou hast delivered his soul, or de delivered his soul and your soul, basically. Okay, so those verses, verses 17 through verse 21, God was speaking to Ezekiel and giving him uh, the background and the uh, definition of what his position as a watchman is okay and what, what he's getting ready to go forward and do as he goes over into the atmosphere of the house of israel and that could be as today uh, again that could be anywhere god may lead that individual where there's a group of people i'm just going to use that just because it could be in the church it could be in an organization corporation school company, wherever, there's a group of people, and within that group of people, there are some saints, okay? There are some, there's the house of the Lord, there is the kingdom, and so God is ushering his spirit in that he may have to use to warn them of what they may be doing that is not pleasing in his sight, and he wants to warn them so that they'll stop doing it before he goes forward with his judgment, just, just like he did with the children of Israel when he sent all of the other prophets to them and then sent Jeremiah in with that warning to let them know for that last time it's on the way God's judgment is going to take place. But there's a grace period. There's always a grace and mercy period for a time, uh, for a moment in time for an individual to repent of whatever it is that they've done because that's basically what God wants us to do, okay? He doesn't want us, he doesn't want to go forward uh, with his wrath. But if uh, you, you completely, uh, com uh, again, 
individuals completely blatantly disrespect God or if they are blatantly ignorant to God and what he is saying and what he is doing, he wants to, he makes that correction because the, if the person is blatantly, blatantly disrespectful to our God, that's not the type of relationship he established for mankind to have in the earth. Okay. He wanted us to be at peace with him. So therefore salvation and Christ Jesus came into the, was released from heaven into the earth for us to be at peace with God. So that's not what he wants. Okay. And then for the person that's ignorant, well, he said it in his word, he would not have us to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to not know him, his presence, when he's speaking, what he's doing. That's not who God is. Okay. He loves us. And hallelujah for that. Okay. Now going on here, verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, arise, go forth into the plain and I will there talk with you. Then I arose and went forth into the plain and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory, which I saw uh, by the river of Chabar. And I fell on my face. Okay. Then the spirit entered into me, set me upon my feet and spoke with me and said unto me, go shut thyself within thine house. Okay. That's another thing. Again, he's getting ready. Uh, he's because he's downloading information into Ezekiel because he's spending time with Ezekiel, getting ready to send him forward into the presence of the people that he has a warning for. He's pulled him into his house. And he says, but thou son of man, behold, they shall put ropes upon you and shall bind you with them. And thou shalt not go out among them. And I'll make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. Listen to this. Now, this is how God <laughs> did. This is how God actually, um, what's the word? Secretly hides his prophetic position, who he is in the kingdom. Because you can be talking to someone that is, you may think is just completely just whatever you may, word you want to give to describe them. Because even here, God says he's making uh, Ezekiel's mouth to be dumb. Okay, he's not going to be speaking, saying much until God gets ready to speak through him. Okay, how he wants to, what he wants to be said in the mix of the people that he's going to send him into. Okay, so, you know, again, he gives Ezekiel his own character, his own, you know, outside of what he's going to speak through him. Okay, basically, he gives him his own way of being. And he says, and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, he says, I'll open your mouth and thou shalt say unto them, thus says the Lord God, and he that hears, let him hear. And he that forbears, let him forbear or who won't, you know, hear it. If he don't receive it, he won't receive it for they are a rebellious house. Okay. But I just wanted to point out that point from verses uh, 24 when he says, The Spirit entered into me and set me upon my face and spoke with me and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thy house, and thou son of man, behold, they shall put ropes upon you and shall bind you with them, and thou shalt not go out among them, and I'll make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. That, I just wanted to point that out right there because, see, God has taken full control over his tongue. Okay, that's what I was the point that we, you know, want to see in whichever way that tongue rolls is the way that the Holy Spirit intended for it to roll with that message to the kingdom of heaven. Whenever he begins to go forward to the children or in the presence of the king of uh, children of Israel. And today it would be as and uh, just as the children of Israel were God's inherited people. Today it will be the kingdom of heaven, the saints of God in the earth. All right. God bless you. God be with you. Uh, this concludes Bible study for chapter three in the book of Ezekiel for today. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward, taking a look again at the prophetic ministry and how God uses the prophetic office in the earth. Okay. And it doesn't have to, it's not a particular assignment to a particular individual at one particular point in time and we're, as we go forward we're going to take a look all into that because again once an individual has been birthed into the kingdom of the holy spirit we are all one in christ we are one body okay one 
body in Christ. All right, God bless you. I'll see you on the next Bible study.